Hello and uh, welcome to another playbook. This one is on how not to gamify. Now I've spent a big chunk of my career building games at folk, at companies like Zynga, where I worked on games like Mafia Wars and Cafe World, uh, and then I ran a game studio of my own. So so I I know a thing or two about building games. But the word gamification is is it's just a it sets off a trigger in me and and I dislike that word to my core because gamification represents. everything that is fundamentally wrong with product building uh, and incentivization uh, in, in, in the present world so this playbook is partly about how not to gamify and then the second part of this is going to be about how do you use game thinking properly right there are so many lessons to be learned from the worlds of gaming for product managers for people who build products uh, so this playbook is about that right so how not to gamify what gamification isn't it isn't a patchwork feature or feature set on top of an existing product or service which incentivizes the usage of the product or service by giving extrinsic rewards incentives is not equal to gamification please repeat this in your head every time you look at incentives given out without any fun without any intrinsic motivation it's not gamification right it is not game thinking being applied it's just rewards being given to users to get users to do something right and that that essentially is what gamification isn't so then what is gamification you ask right to apply game mechanics and game thinking to the core loop of a product or a service in order to boost engagement and other metrics with the product or the service but the critical part here is core loop right now core loop is a term that we use a lot when we build games each game has its core loop a core loop is a set of activities that a user does to play the game and succeed in the game right so it leads to mastery over time as as the more you participate in the core loop the better your character becomes the better your gameplay becomes and you keep improving and you keep learning the game and each product out there has a core loop if you think about it what is the core loop in swiggy uh so in swiggy or zomato the core loop is look up a restaurant find the restaurant pick the food items that you want to eat place an order wait for the order, make a payment wait for the uh, order to come and then tell uh, the restaurant and swiggy or zomato whether you enjoyed the food and whether the delivery was done on time and then the loop starts again right this is the core loop right find something place an order eat it give a rating find something again right so each product any product out there has a core loop of its own so let's let, let's talk about core loops in in the form of gaming so one of the most popular games of all times is uh, is clash of clans and this was clash of clans core loop right so you started by collecting resources so you collected gold and elixir right so coins and elixir were the resources that you were collecting so this was the first part of the loop and then you were using the elixir and coins to build and train so you had barracks and you had a bunch of other things where you built your troops and this was the loop right because these troops could then be used in battle right and in battle you would lose elixir but you would gain coins and ranking and the loop continues collect resources build and train battle come back collect resources build and train battle right very simple loop but can lead to some very amazing mechanics that come into play It leads to a lot of fun a lot of joy games are inherently very simple but you layer a number of simple loops on top of each other and you have a lot of complexity which gets built and a really fun gameplay which gets built and most core products most products that we use on a day uh, on a day to day basis also have core loops of their own but it's very critical to understand what the core loop is and as we mentioned in the in, in the previous slide what we are trying to do is apply game thinking and game mechanics to the core loop so it's not a patchwork it's not an add on you want to figure out what the core loop of your product is and to that core loop you want to apply game thinking and what does game thinking do it will bring joy to your users it will bring delight to your users it will involve them and engage them more with your product and hence improve the overall metrics of your product so you don't have to worry about giving extrinsic rewards you have to worry about figuring out intrinsic motivation <clears throat> and now let's let's jump a little deeper into what extrinsic and intrinsic really means extrinsic is something which is tangible you know there is you do derive satisfaction 
from achieving, like say, when you come first in class, I give you a trophy. That's an extrinsic reward, right? So you do have a sense of achievement and there is a destination and a milestone, but the origin is external. And all the actions that are taken are usually taken for the sake of the reward, not for the sake of the activity. And this is where intrinsic rewards make more sense. So while the reward itself is an intangible, it is a conscious satisfaction, it's a sense of achievement, and it is part of the journey, the origins are within, not without. The origins are not external. And all the actions are taken for the sake of relatedness, for the sake of mastery, and for the sake of purpose, right? And this bit is very, very critical. I'm not saying that all extrinsic rewards are bad. Extrinsic rewards are very important and they play a huge role in sort of acting as the right trigger for a lot of users and pointing them in the right direction. But you need to have a mix of extrinsic and intrinsic rewards. But over time, if you only have extrinsic rewards in your product, then all the user behavior will only be for the sake of the rewards, not for the sake of your product and the core loops of your product. With intrinsic rewards, you would have a good balance. People would want to do uh, these activities in your products because they will feel a sense of mastery, they will feel a sense of relatedness. So now in, in, the, in the next part of this uh, playbook, I'm going to take you through a number of different game mechanics. And again, I'm leaving it up to you to figure out how are you going to apply these game mechanics to the core loop of your product, right? So I'm going to talk about a few game mechanics and I'm going to talk about how in the real world they've been used uh, with, for, with a lot of great sort of effect, right? So game mechanics 101. <clears throat> One of the first mechanics is quests and tasks, right? Now, the great thing about quests and tasks is that if you give your users a set of tasks and you lay a path for them, it makes life easier for them. People like to-do lists. People like going jumping from point A to point B to point C. So for the kind of users who love guided paths, quests and tasks in games play a very important role because that is how you learn the core loop of the product, right? So this, this example here is from Farmville you know, harvest for wheat, sell that wheat, right? Get resources by doing X number of things, right? So you are essentially giving a path for the user. These are essentially activities that they would have done in the game, but you are essentially creating a path for them, creating a quest for them. And going on a quest is always fun, right? So, so we, this is, this is a, a great element of game learning, which you should apply to your products, right? Gacha and Kompu Gacha. This is probably the most nefarious, the most sort of... Um, controversial of all game mechanics that have been applied to not only games, but to uh, to a lot of products. Now, what gacha means is, you know, you, you would have seen th this kind of a machine in a lot of malls, right, where you use a small crane, you control a small crane, uh, and you use it to pick a toy or chocolates or whatever, right, like different kinds of gifts, and then you drop it in the basket and you can collect it, right? Now, the thing is, there's a probability attached that sometimes you might not be able to pick anything. So it's not just about skill. There's a lot of probability at work here. So you think you want to pick up that green toy over there, but sometimes you won't be able to pick it up and you might end up picking up a toy that you already have or you sometimes come out empty handed. So that's the gacha mechanic, which is sort of a, uh, a Japanese term for gotcha. Like I, I got it, right? So uh, it, it's, it's, a, uh, it, it's a term used to describe machines like these. Compu gacha means complete gacha. So essentially what you're saying is, what if you wanted to collect, there are five different types of toys in this gacha machine, and I would give you $10,000 if you got one toy of each type. Now thing is, there's only one green one and there are a lot of blue ones. So the chances of you getting a blue toy are much higher than the chances of you getting a green toy, right? So if you get item A and if you get item B, and if you get item C and D, then you get a grand prize. The thing is, item A is very easily available, but item D is very, very rare to get. So the reality is for getting these four items, it's not like you will play this game four times. You might have to play this game hundreds of times to complete your set, right? And then win the grand prize. And so gacha in itself was never problem problematic. Gacha is a very good way of giving variable rewards to people, right? You have a number of things. You have a mystery box. It opens up. You have a probability of what you can get. The complete gacha mechanic, the compu gacha mechanic is a little problematic because to complete your set, you might have to play it hundreds and hundreds of times. So imagine if you had to put like a, a dollar in to this machine each time you played. And to complete to say win a hundred dollar prize, you actually had to run this machine on an average 200 to 300 times, which means you have spent $300 to get a hundred dollar prize. 
and this is the reason kampu gacha has actually banned in a lot of countries a lot of countries actually passed uh you know laws which ban the use of kampu gacha in games right but the gacha mechanic in itself is a very interesting mechanic uh, it, it it surprises users it has a lot of delight attached to it i would i would stay away from using kampu gachas but you should know that a mechanic like this exists and it has been used uh, poorly in games and in the real world right slot machines now slot machines essentially again are a pure sort of delight factor right you really really no you don't control there is no conditional probability right each each roll or, or each pull of the lever is actually a unique pull right so it's a complete variable reward machine and in, in the real world casinos make the most amount of money on slot machines right uh, but it's a delightful factor when you, when you hit the jackpot it, it, it's a lot of delight so again for giving variable rewards just like a gacha machine a slot machine can also be very useful daily return rewards now this is something which is used in the world of loyalty rewards the most right typically you, you know your starbucks and your coffee shops they give you rewards like you know hey come back and drink a cup of coffee every single day and you know on your 10th coffee is free on us or like drink just like 10 cups of coffee and get a stamp on each cup and we will give you a reward right so daily return rewards are a very very common sort of way of and it's it's it, it's it's used a lot in games it's used a lot in real worlds there's a certain joy to sort of again it's sort of a linear quest if you think about it do all these tasks in a row and get a reward ah now things start getting interested so one of the things which which people really sort of really get into is when either there is a limited supply of items or there is a limited time in which you have to do something so car manufacturers have been doing limited supply for a while so you know there'll be a new ferrari and there'll only be 500 of them which are manufactured so you know there's a rush there's a there's a sort of a there's a competition to sort of go and acquire one of those uh cars because they're just available in limited supply in the digital world this is done quite often where there is a limited supply of even virtual goods and and you know you want to be the first one to acquire it right if you think about nfts and a whole bunch of uh other modern sort of techniques limited supply is being used a lot limited time is the is the other one that hey you only have one week to collect it so mcdonalds for example with its happy meal toys does this right they are both limited supply and limited time so a new frozen movie has come out and you have toys from the frozen movies available at mcdonalds and your kids will be pushing you to go to mcdonalds every single day just so that they can complete their entire set so there's a mix of a gacha mechanic there also because you don't know which which happy meal toy you will get with your happy meal right but again limited supply limited time plus a gacha mechanic thrown in right so the, in, in the real world we use these game mechanics all the time right leaderboards and leagues <clears throat> now leaderboards are pretty straightforward right uh, if if a bunch of people are competing right now the olympics are going on and you know you you're in every sport and overall in the medal tally what you're looking at is essentially a leaderboard mm -hmm. but a league is a little bit more interesting a league is interesting because you don't really want to compete against people who are far uh, superior to you have already mastered uh, the product as opposed to far inferior to you you know uh, grandmaster chess players don't necessarily want to play against school kids you want to play against people who are at a similar level to you because that will help you become better now this happens this is being used a lot in say fitness products right where fitness products show you leaderboards and games show you leaderboards right but you can also have leagues so if you are a cyclist who sort of cycles typically 100 kilometers a week and and you want to race against other people you want to race against competitors who are similar to you so a lot of products have been using leaderboards in leagues very effectively for this sort of element of competition the the game mechanic which is perhaps used the most in products popularized by products like foursquare etc essentially achievement badges right now the thing about badges is not just that you do a certain activity and you win a badge it's also about the fact that you are able to show off this badge to your friends to your social group to strangers right so badges act as a great social currency and this part is very very critical right badges are only effective if there is a way for you to display your badges to other people so yeah again a very very strong sort of motive people love showing off so this is this is something that you you can effectively use in products and a lot of products have used it quite effectively coding products use this all the time learning products duolingo as, as a great set of badges uh, right 
virtual mm-hmm. currencies now this is this is you know the entire credit card industry is essentially built on this you know you do you do a bunch of activities you buy things you get loyalty points uh, for every transaction you get a certain number of points these points lead you to different tiers so you know there's bronze silver gold platinum right and then you can use those points uh, in some places your level is permanent but your points are like a currency so you can use that currency to buy things so it gets you you know if you are a bond voyage uh, member on marriott you know you can use your points to get an extra night to stay in a hotel or upgrade your hotel booking right so virtual currencies are used in the real world a lot and sort of have been used in products a lot again a concept completely borrowed from the world of games uh, this is this is a mechanic which i haven't really seen used a lot but i think it's a great variable reward mechanic uh, so if if you if you sort of played games like pokemon etc you would realize that essentially your outcomes are variable right so you take two pokemon or you take an egg and you don't know what kind of creature is going to come out of the egg right and then you take two creatures of very different types so a and b are bred and then you know the outcomes could be c d e and f so essentially ev could sort of evolve into these different types of creatures now if you have a if you have a mechanic or if you have a way in which you can give variable rewards and you, you leave it to users to sort of mix and match and figure out what they can create it could be something really really interesting i haven't really seen any product use breeding or mutation mechanics uh, well in their product in terms of giving out variable rewards but it'll be very interesting to see if somebody does this games have been doing this really really well of course right oh this mechanic is 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 phenomenal right the appointment timer essentially is that hey your crops grow in a certain amount of time so you have to come back to the product to do an activity right and if you don't something degrades right so your treasure chest opens in exactly 2 hours right so you come back to the product in 2 hours or in a game that hey your you know your tomatoes have harvested in farmville so you come back and you harvest them because you want to uh, you know harvest them while they are ripe and so they don't go rotten right but if you really think about it television is the oldest appointment mechanic every week every monday on 9 pm a show starts so that's your appointment mechanic right there right um if you think about it even in the world of ott so while they just binge watching releasing an entire season in one go a, a lot of folks like disney plus uh, or or even apple tv are dropping their shows weekly to go back to the old television mechanic and that creates a great appointment every week you come in and there's a buzz created around socially everyone's waiting for that wednesday evening episode of uh, a new episode of loki and so this appointment mechanic is, is is something it's really really strong if you really think about it because it leads to uh, your entire user base coming back to your product at a certain time so again a game mechanic used very effectively borrowed from the real world used very effectively in games and again being used very effectively in products right ah this this is this is what i call the jigsaw or the multi part buildable and essentially in a jigsaw puzzle i imagine if you had like a 4 cross 3 jigsaw puzzle and you know you have to collect these 12 pieces to finish that jigsaw but you are essentially trying to find each uh, of of these pieces so it's a little bit of a gacha mechanic and then you put it all together and it completes the jigsaw and then you get a prize in a multi part buildable you are essentially sort of hey, you're trying to build something so you need wood and then you need fevicol and then you need nuts and bolts and then you need some decoration and then you put all of this together and it completes something right now what it completes in the reward that you get could be something just sort of very intrinsic could be something completely virtual and inside the product but it's like a joy and you know you could be building a house or you could be you know the building a tree house or whatever right and these are parts that you put together and build something out so all of these are different mechanics different mechanics from the real world which were adopted into games or mechanics which were evolved in games and then have been used in the real world and people have mixed and matched these and applied them more importantly to the core loop of their product right and by applying them to the core loop of their product you sort of have elements of compete and cooperate right and building more effective products right so this is this is what gamification should be it should be the application of game mechanics to your core loop it should not just be about giving out incentives and burning through a lot of cash right so i hope you uh, all enjoyed this there are hundreds and hundreds of game mechanics out there there there's just so much material out there on games just play a lot of games there's so much to learn for product builders from the world of games because it gives you a very good sense of how to add delight and how to get your users really really engaged in your product 
So take care. And uh, I hope you look forward to more uh, playbooks. Take care. Bye.